Hey, how's it going guys? And welcome back to another video. Now, as I'm sure most of you are aware by now, last year I picked up my first car, an Abarth 595 Trofeo. Now, over the last few months, I've had various people asking me whether or not I'm gonna be doing a few small mods to the car. So this sparked a debate in my mind. Should I do a few small mods to my car and keep it a while longer, or should I save up my money and pick up something like this, the Abarth 695 Biposto Record Edition? So to help me answer this question, I've recruited the help of Steph from Steph AB TV. Now Steph is the go-to guy for all things a bath on YouTube. He's got a mad 250 horsepower 595 Competizione so he's going to be helping me answer the question should I mod or upgrade my car? So Steph, welcome to the channel. Thank you for having me, mate. It's Thank you. great to finally get to do a video with I you. I know, I know. We've been talking about it for a while. <laughs> so you are the go-to guy for all things modified bath on YouTube. Allegedly so, Allegedly. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you've got this absolutely fantastic 250 brake horsepower monster. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, shall we take a close look at your car? Absolutely. Talk me through a bit of the um, aesthetic mods as well as the performance mods which you've done. Sounds like a plan. And then we'll hop in the cars and go for a bit of a drive, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Let's okay, do it. Let's Let me show you it. what's going on. Okay, so it's obviously as you've mentioned Luke it's running 250 horsepower by 288 foot pound at all really and truly aesthetically from the outside there isn't that much that I've actually done to it but I guess the most noticeable difference is probably down here uh, which is kind of how this car became famous if you like um, it's got its custom Lamborghini style Brembo calipers so they're official mantis green paint um, and loads of people ask me why why bother and I just think why not it's cool um, the other big difference you'll see is the whale tail spoiler on the back so this is a uh, road race motorsport rear wing imported over from the states uh, it comes in kind of fiberglass and I've had it wrapped matte uh, gloss black uh, you've got the euro style headlights I think they look pretty good I think the standard headlights on the Abarth 595 range until you get to the new version which is the series 4 they look a little bit dated if I'm honest so this kind of just gives it that little burst of life so I do like that you've got the power motive exhaust at the bottom here uh, so it originally had a record monitor exhaust which you get on all of the 595 comps uh, but I've changed this to a valve power motor which I'll show you guys in a moment main difference being because it's got a big turbo it's got a decat downpipe on it and it wakes the dead when I start it up so I like the option of having the ability to quieten it down if I want to wind deflectors they don't really count I mean they're falling off so we'll, we'll just tuck those up there but uh, yeah wind deflectors just to kind of complete the look and uh, from an outside perspective that's kind of it it's lowered on VMAX coilovers um, and it's got two and a half degree of negative camber all round um, some say it's great you know I think it looks good um, and I think because the car's been lowered so much you almost need the camber to clear the arches but aesthetically that's um, that's kind of it really and then I guess we get to the engine part, the heart of the car, um, which is where it's had all of its main work done. So um, the car is running 250 by 288 foot pound at all. Um, the biggest difference, I guess, where you see this massive forge intake as well, but it's the turbo here. So this specific turbo is kind of based around a GT240 housing. It was supposed to be a turbo that was going to be packaged up and built for a company, which unfortunately now has gone under. They did a really good job on my car, and this thing is massive. So much so that we had to bend things to get it to fit. So it wasn't the most practical job, but I'm pleased to say it's kind of the only car in the country with this turbo. So it's a little bit more laggy compared to some of the stuff that you might be used to. So your own car, the Biposto, is a bit more laggy in this but when it comes on it comes on really really hard yeah and that's pretty much it and um yeah i'm excited to see your reaction in this um because you've driven all of them haven't you you've driven yeah. the 145 comp 180 yeah now the biposto and mm -hmm. i'm going to take you out in this it'll so. be interesting to see the power difference i am actually quite scared so make sure once you've seen this video head over to steph's channel because he's going to be making a reaction video with me in his 250 horsepower yeah. 595 competizione and i won't hold back either so it'll be, it'll be a good <laughs> watch i promise you that okay so steph welcome to the 695 biposto yes it feels like a deja vu yeah i was gonna say <laughs> but it feels quite familiar to you so you've had quite a bit of experience in this car i've had it for the past week yeah and already i have already fallen in love with it so you know this is going to be quite difficult if your car is better than this i will be very surprised and i think they're, they're two very different cars in the sense of this was 
purpose built out of the factory to yeah, kind of just be a hoonigan car, oh. track ready and all that. I mean, you can even feel it now, it's quite a bumpy ride. Yeah. And that's <laughs> standard. I think there's something about modifying your own car that you kind of add your own stamp on it. Mm. But then it depends how much money you want to spend. Although these cars, they still cost a fair bit. If you yeah, were to pick one at about 20 or 22, 23 yeah, grand. Yeah, exactly. I mean, what were they new? They were about 35, yeah, were they? About the 35, first 36, 000, which is a lot of car for something that doesn't have air conditioning, yeah. doesn't have rear seats, yeah. but I guess you pay all of that for the Ferrari. Pay, it it just seems the less you have in one of these, the more expensive it is. Yeah. It, it, it is actually ridiculous, honestly. But it's the limited factor as well, isn't it? Because yeah. there's only 133 of these. Yeah, of course. So for those of you who don't know, the uh, 695 Bipasto record, there's only 133, as you just mentioned, and it's finished in Ferrari Modern Yellow, which is quite a quite a big talking point, I suppose. <laughs> you can often uh, brag about that, oh, we've got a Ferrari Yellow above, but yeah, it, it really is a nice colour. Um, but it's just completely stripped out. It's more track focused, I suppose. It's a track, I suppose you could say a track toy, couldn't you? Yeah, yeah, um, exactly. I doubt many people would buy one of these and use it every day. And that's the thing, you've nailed it on the head there. Yeah. Because I, I think that personally anyway, as a daily, you could daily this car, but it's not big around much. Easier to daily in the winter <laughs> than it is in the summer because of the lack of AC. Yeah. But because this car's quite special, and there's almost an element of you wouldn't want to daily every day. Plus the fact you've got no rear seats, you've got no real way of hiding any of your shopping if you put it in the back. <laughs> when you've got something like that roll bar behind you, it just looks so good. It does. It really <laughs> does. And that's the thing like, about this car. You said that um, you, could, you probably could daily it in the winter. For someone like me that's got no responsibilities, no family to worry about, yeah. I could quite easily daily this. I yeah. mean, I really don't mind about the, the ride quality. It is really harsh. Yeah. I don't mind about the fact that there's no rear seats. That yeah. just means there's more boot space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and honestly, <laughs> I really could daily one of these. It's just so much fun. And that's the thing. And I think with, and even with your own above, you'll find that the Bath make cars with character. Yeah, that's exactly it. I mean, you don't buy an Abarth for practicality or anything like that. You buy it for the driving experience of the fun factor, yeah, don't you? Exactly, just, exactly. That. It just screams character. It's just, oh, it's such a fun car to drive around. And honestly, what else would you go for in this category of car? I just don't know what other car I could see myself in other than a different Abarth, something yeah. with a bit more power. 4C. There you go, completely, that's it. Completely out of the price range though. Completely but, different category as well. But similar characteristics, yeah, lightweight, yeah, exactly. two seats. Terrible all, ride. Terrible ride, <laughs> all about the fun factor. Completely factor. impractical. Yeah, but, but again, you know, the, the thing is with this, especially the Biposto record, is it gets that, it gets the respect. It gets respect from a lot of people. You take this to a supercar show and um, people are gonna look at it, they'll love it. They just think there's just something cool about these cars. Yeah, of course. But um, I guess you get a chance to see what the acceleration is like now. <laughs> you get massive torque stare, it's absolutely insane. Brilliant, isn't it? You just hold on for dear life. And do you know what, and this is one of the things I, I always like to... <laughs> Shut up, <Steph>. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it is so much fun. So I think that sums up what the 695 Bipasto is capable of and the things that I love about it, but it's now time to hop inside Steph's absolute monster, the 250 brake horsepower 595 Competizione. I am absolutely scared for my life. Honestly, I don't know what this thing is going to be capable of, but once again, make sure you head over to Steph's channel to see my reaction. Um, oh, pray for me. Buying a 
uprated a bath or modded one. What are your thoughts right now? <laughs> well, no, I'm just back to square one. <laughs> yes. See, I got, I got here today, met up with you, and I was thinking, ah, oh, you know what? I think I'm just going to buy the Bipasto. And... Have I thrown a spanner in the works oh, now? Oh, my. <laughs> yes! Obviously, this car has unbelievable power. I mean, <laughs> there's no other word to describe it. I just, yeah. I'm, I'm speechless, honestly. Thanks, mate. So, so talking about these mods again, yeah. um, you've got an upgraded turbo, which is one of a kind. Yeah. How does that actually like affect things like warranty and all that servicing costs? Because well, so well, warranty. It's out of warranty now anyway, but even, right. even if you were to do this kind of a conversion to a, a car that's new, you void your warranty instantly because right. it's, a, it's not in a bath part, if that makes sense. Okay, yeah. Um, servicing, I use the guys over in Aylesbury called A4 Alpha, they're really, really good. Yeah. Um, and I wouldn't I wouldn't take this to an a bath dealer for servicing just because there's too much done to it yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, I can understand um, And I just, I just take it to a specialist. But it does, having a modified car is great, you know, I mean, you guys have just seen the reaction and the fun fact of it, but, <laughs> you know, you have to maintain it a lot more, like servicing yeah. intervals come down, um, you need to always warm it up right, you need to think about, you know, things that could go wrong, and things do go wrong when you put, you know, you're running 100 on horsepower more than what the block is supposed to take as standard, so things do go wrong. I see, yeah. Fortunately, touch wood, I haven't had any real issues with it, it's just been brilliant. So in terms of exhaust, uh, yeah. you've got the, is it again? It's the power motive, power motive. valve power motive exhaust, yeah. Yeah, see that's quite different and uh, honestly like, the only exhaust which I've really seen on these are the Monza, yeah. um, Akrapovic, Bombardoni yeah. and Direnza. Yeah. Um, I think for me it would either have to be the uh, Bombardoni or Direnza exhaust. I would go Bombardoni is a good shout. Yeah, yeah, see. Bombardoni is a really good exhaust. A lot of people, well. a lot of the bar owners have said that that's one of the best value for money exhaust. Yeah. Because it is surprisingly cheap, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Around about 200 quid or something like that. It is, it is. I mean, you know. You can't, can't go really wrong for 200 No, exactly. And um, what that does, it gets rid of the silencer at the back, doesn't it? Yeah. So it allows a lot more of the engine noise to go through. You get a few more pops and bangs. Yeah. I mean, mine as it is, standard on cold start, you do get some nice crackles and pops, but yeah. I just want some more um, sort of high revving gear change, you know, upshift yeah, snaps, yeah, yeah. things like that. So you probably, you, you definitely get that when you, uh, if you if you were to remap your car. Uh, you think, yeah. With the exhaust, you know, the intake and exhaust and a remap, you'll probably push your car to about 190 horsepower, 230, maybe 240 foot pounds of torque, it'll be fast, and you'll get those pops and bags on upshifts. Um, in terms of other things as well, you've lowered the car so you can get different springs like HR springs, coilovers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. um, you were saying that you think for my car it would be better off to go with the HR springs rather than the coilovers, say. So. Yeah, I mean, I think for what you're trying to achieve, just to get a little bit of a better start. Yeah, and, yeah, exactly. You know, the coilovers cost a lot of money as well. Um, yeah. You can get, you know, the, the standard suspension on the bath cars is great, you know, bath don't build rubbish cars. But if you just want to lower it down a little bit and get rid of that rear arch gap, H&R springs, you can't go wrong. So, aesthetic mods. Yeah. Now, you've done quite a bit to yours. You've got wind deflectors. Yeah. Uh, the ducktail spoiler, which I think really adds to the already um, good-looking spoiler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, honestly, that is something which I look at doing straight away tonight. And other aesthetic mods as well, you've got the Competizione headlights, which I really like. Yeah. I think I would want to get those for mine. Yeah. They look much better than Xenon's. Yeah. And yours have got the, what do you say, it was Euro spec rear lights, didn't you? Yeah. Um, it's just, it gets rid of that sort of white and chrome. Yeah, it does. Surround, it, do, it, it does. And I think like people, at the time when I did that modification, um, there wasn't the option of having the Series 4, which yeah, is the newer which version of rear lights. Yeah, which is what I would go for, honestly. Um, and now, like a company like MS Racing, they do the Series 4 rear lights, so you can just go straight onto them. I think they look really good. Um, but those behind as well, you, know, you can't go on 100 or quid. Mm. Happy days. Overall, you've done a fantastic job on this car, and honestly, Thanks, mate. you should be really proud of it, really happy with it, because it looks so clean, it looks so aggressive. Honestly, I think it's one of the best looking abafts on the roads in the UK. It just really makes me want to do something to mine and make it a yeah. bit more unique, a bit more of a personal touch. But I'm sure you guys in the comments can let me know. If you had an abaf and you were looking to mod it, what sort of things would you add to it to give it a bit more of a personal touch? Yeah. Because, yeah. I, I don't know, I mean, you've not really been very helpful, have you? No, I haven't. I mean, I've kind of just invited Luke down here for a collaboration and now he's leaving. 
he started the video loving the Biposto, he's leaving the video wanting to mod his car. So. I'm back to square one. That's social media influencing at its best. <laughs> <laughs> so, first of all, thank you so much for allowing You're me to welcome, come down mate. and try thank out your you. car today. You were very I welcome. mean, you've been very helpful, honestly. I know that I said that you weren't very helpful sending me back to square one, but <laughs> it's given me a great insight yeah. as to the sort of upgrades that I could potentially do to mine yeah. and potentially where my car could be in a few months if I decide to go down the modding route yeah. because. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Honestly, I'm still undecided. I'd, lo I'd, love, I'd love to hear what your subscribers think, whether yeah, you should go course. modded or just go straight out the posto. Um, anyway, we're going to round off the video here, so hopefully you have all enjoyed it. Make sure you head over to Steph's channel, check out his content and also my reaction yeah. to his little beast there. It's a good one, trust <laughs> me, it's a good one. <laughs> oh my god, that guy is ridiculous, <laughs> honestly. Um, but yeah, make sure you leave a like on the video if you have enjoyed it. Comment down below your thoughts and opinions and make sure you are subscribed for any uploads from me in the future. Thanks for watching. Thank you.